except for the rows of stones, this is not a typical cemetery. Inviting and welcoming are not words you usually use to describe a cemetery, but that's exactly what this place is. When people find out about it, they come back, even if they don't know anybody that's buried here. It's pretty, pretty impressive. Coming here and this job, just the best job I've had in my life. One of the things I like about this cemetery is it's, it's alive. This is not a, a place where somebody comes and is buried and that's the end of it. The story continues when the families come here and visit and walk the grounds. We get graded all the way down to the height of our grass and how our grass looks. We have by far one of the best veteran cemeteries in the nation here in New Hampshire. I want it to always be that way because it's a reflection upon our veterans and their families. It's a reflection upon the state of New Hampshire and the nation as to how we take care of our veterans. My first thought was it reminded me of Arlington Cemetery because I saw all of the flags lined up along the driveway and I wasn't prepared for the spectacular lawns and how well maintained it was. So it really was shocking to me that here right in my own backyard was something that I'd pass by because from the road you, you don't really notice anything. But as soon as you pull down the driveway, it's a little bit mind-blowing that such a beautiful, dedicated site is there that is not well known and that more people should know about. The New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery was long in coming. I was asked to become the director and I came and visited the state grounds with my wife and all I saw was a big sand pile, and my heart sunk. I said, we gotta do this. Somebody has got to come take charge and build this cemetery. This was a state forest, so there's a lot of green, it's a lot of New Hampshire. It was basically a blank canvas, you know, um, no idea of what was gonna evolve um, to what we have here today. We reached out to all the veterans organizations we traveled around the country. We looked at other veteran cemeteries. From there, we started thinking out of the box. We started the New Hampshire State Veteran Cemetery Association. We were able to combine federal funding and state funding and donation funding. We thought of what is it we want for the future. The walkway was developed. The history walkway was developed by many people that volunteered their times and came up with the ideas. When the cemetery was young, it was in the development process. There was a lot of plans laid out on the table that had to come to fruition and they had to figure out a way to do it and keep it within budget. And if there was one thing Roger had a talent for and that was keeping things in budget. We had a gentleman that donated one week of his construction crew. They cut back approximately 60 feet back in the woods, cleared all the woods out, removed all the stumps, all on a volunteer basis because People were motivated to help, and I think that's what makes the New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery. People are motivated, they want to help. All we have to do is ask for it. Put the seed out and it'll grow. A teacher out of Chichester came up and asked if she could take some photos and could she do a little bit more. She did some photos, she did a syllabus, and that's when it's like, wow, we've really got more of a treasure here than I had originally thought. The vision that came out of the early concepts came to be known as the 20 points of history, and the idea here is that they move the classroom around in an experiential way and read those stories, discuss those stories in the context of people being literally buried feet from where they are. 
What I do now is I have them find specific information about the 20 points of history, but when they go down the walkway, I have them reflect on what was most powerful to them and why, so that they have more ownership of what is of value in that walkway to them, what has personally struck them. They do have to find specific people and go to those graves. Kids have said that that many times is the most powerful thing for them because they've made a personal connection whether or not they knew that person. They just feel like they are able to go and almost say thank you to that veteran by acknowledging them at their gravestone. When students, regardless of the age, visit the cemetery, I hope that they take away that those who served made a difference. And hopefully they take away uh, some curiosity when they get home to perhaps ask were there veterans in our family that they don't know about, that they, the conversations have never come up before, and to learn a little bit more about some family history that they may not know about before it's too late. I know that for the aging generation, it's extremely important for them to know that the kids have any sort of interest at all because they often will say to me that children aren't interested and they're afraid that history will be forgotten. There are a lot of incidents and wars that are forgotten. You hardly mention World War I these days, and World War II is getting very close to being pushed aside by the Vietnam War. It teaches them about family, they may have grandparents or great-grandparents who were buried here. It shows them the connection, and it shows the cost of war, the real cost of war. And it's a lesson they need to learn if in the future we can ever hope to have a, at least one generation who didn't have to go to war. My younger brother was funny, and he was complicated. Mike was, if anything, playful, mischievous. He would be mean only to get a laugh. He wouldn't really be mean-hearted. Like there was a time he trapped me in a sleeping bag and rode me down a flight of stairs like a toboggan. He had a personality for miles and miles and miles. He was the middle child, but the oldest boy had a killer smile. He was an all-around good kid. My brother died on March 22nd, 2009, and he saves uh, every one of his squad mates except for one. He um, stepped in an IED and lost a leg and some fingers and suffered some uh, mortal wounds, but most of them had no idea how severe it was. He tied on his own tourniquet. He remained in complete control of his squad. He called in his own nine line, his own air support. Nobody had any idea of how injured he was. He refused to be removed from the battlefield until after all of his men were taken away and made sure they were all okay. He was calm and cool and collected as he normally was. And he made sure that every last one of them was going home. He was not leaving until they were all out and he wanted to make sure they all made it home, and he did that. I'm very proud of him for that. He's actually buried over by the gazebo. It just kind of came naturally. We never really knew what his wishes were, and it just kind of seemed the right thing to do. I think I'd be a little more lost or a little more sad, not quite as far along as I am in the grieving process. To be able to come here in the peace and quiet and sit with him whether I read a book to myself or sometimes out loud or I just talk or be silent, it's a great comfort to come here. When you drive in or you walk up, it's just peaceful. It's exactly where I think my brother should be, in the woods, in New Hampshire, where he's from. One year, I helped put wreaths out at the grave sites for Christmas, and it really is moderately organized chaos, but it's a lot of good fun. 
because you get a lot of people who want to help, who want to volunteer and feel like they're doing something important and there's only so many wreaths to give out. You might be, you know, clamoring, uh, almost like it's Black Friday, trying to go for Tickle Me Elmo, only you're trying to get three wreaths to so then walk a few hundred yards out to go put it out. And so people get very eager because it does mean a lot to them. But it's, it's fun. I mean, there's coffee, there's donuts, and there's little kids, so it's a good time. I'm surprised sometimes at how many people show up at these various events. There's a couple here in, in uh, Bosquin who are here every night at 7 o'clock when taps are sounded. There are other days that there'll be 20 or 30. I mean, it's, I mean, you just never know when you get here. We have ceremonies, rain or shine, and, uh, and Veterans Day 2015. According to what I heard from a lot of the visitors that have been to every ceremony, they said it's probably the first time that they recall that it rained. I held an umbrella over the people at the podium. I thought it worked pretty seamlessly. And the neat thing is, in looking at the people, I didn't hear nary a one complain about the weather. They came either with a raincoat or an umbrella. We had people that came up from Nashua and, um, and Manchester. Their parades got canceled and they said, you know what, we, we want to go to a ceremony. We know there's one at the cemetery and so they came up even though it was raining. People are coming on their own, not any showing of expecting that they are here. They're here because they feel they'd like to pay respects uh, to the people that have been interred here. To see all of the chairs filled, people standing, people sitting on the grass. I think it's just grown to quite a deal. The best times are when you come by at five, six o'clock at night and you listen to taps play and you, you know, it's, it's hollow ground. Very emotional. Taps, when they play taps, it kinda, kinda gets to you and get, you know, choke you up a little bit, yeah. I've been to three of them, I think, and this last one that I went to, there were so many people. I mean, it was packed. And I was saying to a friend of mine, he said, wow. I said, yeah, I said, look at this. Said, well, maybe people are finally recognizing what this is all about, Memorial Day. It's not just to have a cookout or uh, go to the beach or uh, family get-togethers and stuff like that, you know? D this is important. These people have sacrificed their lives for all of us to even do what we're doing. For Memorial Day, we're, we're maxed out. I'd say any place between five and 600 people. It's all walks of life, all generations. That's what we love to see. We love to see when you get the grandparents and the parents and the grandchildren, in some cases the great-grandchildren. What I like most is when you come, like Memorial Day or Fourth of July or any of those types of days, you see families here. Not just families like mine who have lost somebody, but people who are here to honor and remember every one of those people buried here. The men and women that have fought for our country in all the different wars and conflicts. They're here to honor them, to remember them, and to pay their respects. But they're teaching their children about continuing on that honor and teaching them to remember and to respect that service. It's almost like a, a community thing where people come and, and they celebrate instead of mourn, which I like. I like that idea much better. And so you see people laughing and joking and walking. It's not empty here, it's full of life. There's life here. I had gotten a call from someone who had asked me if I could re-enlist a sailor. And she asked me, she says, well, where's a great place that we could do this where it would be, you know, where my family could come and, and they could, uh, you know, they could see it. And uh, it, it didn't take me long to come up with the idea. And I said, I got just the spot. I said, we've got this memorial walkway up at the cemetery. I said, we happen to have a ceremony going on that day. So if your family wants to come up, they'll be able to participate and see the ceremony. I said, but we can take care of your reenlistment at the same time, right in front of the Navy Memorial. She says, oh, that sounds perfect. She brought the entire family up. Her brother came up. I got a chance to meet them all. 
took him out to the walkway and, and uh, essentially re-enlisted her right there. Congratulations. <laughs> well done. The Memorial Walkway is an area set aside that has all sorts of different monuments that families have had created or organizations have had created. In the time that I've been going to the cemetery, which has been eight or ten years, I've seen it grow tremendously. We have a, a great area uh, that has a lot of monuments dedicated to the different services. And you'll see service members and their families and veterans come in and do special events for those. It's a busy place. They just had a basic idea of utilizing that small patch of forest behind the administration building as a place to go where they could put monuments back there that would not be part of the main cemetery and distract from the cemetery, but at the same time give people a place to go and reflect. When you look at all the different groups that put monuments in there, and you realize in looking at them all at how many different backgrounds and cultures of people contributed to the military service of this country. And I think that's really what those monuments represent, not just all the different periods of war, but who went. When we serve, we take that oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That really, in my mind, is a bilateral contract. We have to be able to take care of veterans in a way that they don't always recognize. And I think the cemetery is one aspect of that that they don't always think about up front, but realize that when their time comes and they're getting ready to make those plans, that they have a place that they can go. The Honor Guard started back in 2000. We take a lot of pride in, in the amount of training that we do to make sure that it looks precise and that it looks professional every single time. And even though we're doing this part-time, part of the reason why we train as much as we do is because we want to try to be as good as we can be so that we can look just like those folks do at Arlington so they can get the same type of service. From the start to finish, from the time we go to the gravesite and taps is played and then the flag is lifted and folded reverently and then presented to the next to kin, we give them the same speech every single time. And for many, that's the first time that they've ever seen a ceremony like that. And so it's a big surprise to them sometimes when they see this. And I think for some of the relatives even, it just kind of hits them that their uncle, their grandfather, their father, or whatever the case might be, how important their service was. And I think that's part of the importance of having a, a good honors detail, is that by doing that, we convey that importance. We convey that message to the family that your loved one is deceased, but we honor their service here. Not just now, but we honor it every day. One of the things that was difficult when everything first happened was, what do we do now? When he first passed, there were people coming in out of town. There were arrangements to be made, you know, a quick ceremony or two. And then everybody left. And then you get that quiet where you can hear yourself breathe at night. Having a place like this has made it easier to focus. I have a place where I can come and still hang with my brother, is what a lot of it boils down to for me. I can come and I can joke, I can come and talk with him about things that I'm going through, conversation that I'll never have with him, at least I can come and, and still feel like I'm relating with him in some ways. Without this cemetery, I have to say that it would be a lot harder, I think, to move forward. This cemetery really did help with the healing process for me and my family. We're all part of a club that none of us really wanted to join. And we know what the other families are feeling, what they're thinking. 
there's a kind of unspoken bond. And so, yes, getting together and doing all of these things, it is helpful to the families. I come here to talk to my brother, to see if I can hear him speak to me. It is a place I come when I am sad and I miss him. It is a place I come to tell him good news. It's a place we come to celebrate his birthday or mourn his death. It is a place I sometimes come and just walk around for the peace and quiet of it. It's beautiful and calming. And when you walk through the grounds, you almost like release a deep breath. I have a friend who had heard of this cemetery and he and his wife came down for the hundred nights. Before they left, he was looking for application papers and he's uh, about 60 miles away. I think that there are many people who have come here that would ordinarily have been in their local cemeteries, but they find out what is done here as far as maintenance is concerned, the general uh, feeling of, well, I guess you can say welcome uh, from the staff that is here, uh, and they very definitely feel that, yes, this is where I want to be. When veterans actually were in the military, they're used to high standards. They train to high standards. So when they walk onto a piece of property that comes at the highest standards, they feel at home. George Washington was supposed to have said, the willingness with which our young people to serve in any war, no matter how justified, will be determined on how they see veterans of earlier wars are treated and respected by this country. If we can't take care of those veterans all the way up till their last day, why would anybody want to wear this uniform? I always tell my wife, I got the old soldiers home, what do you got? She says, I don't care, just put me where there's flowers and I'm gonna go before you. And this went on for 15 years. She did go before, and I couldn't think of a better place than here. That's flowers. I think it's most important that the spouses be involved because they were the ones that had to keep the home fires burning while the service member was not around. My wife and I decided to file our application for uh, internment here, and we plan to hopefully in another 40 years or so, <laughs> we'll be interned here. I just recently had my wife buried there, Patricia. I know that's where I was going, and she just was taken by it. What a beautiful place. So clean, and everything was so bright. She would just kept going on and on. <laughs> I says, yeah, I, I kind of like it. Then we went into the chapel. She loved the chapel. I had a hard time getting her out of there. We're in one of the walls. Yeah, there's enough for two of us. So yeah, if she moves over a little bit, I'll, I'll fit in there somehow. I think that it's important to know who the person was. My brother's headstone says, beloved son, brother, and friend, because he was all of those things, and a million more. But if you walk around and you read the headstones, the inscriptions that some people put, you get to really know who these people were. There are some that talk about their greatest grandfather, and beloved husband, and Red Sox fan, missed by his dog. So you know those things are important. Those are big parts of who that person was. It gives you an idea of who's there, and a little bit about their story. This is a, a real place of connection, connection to history, connection to the past, but also connection to the future. It's almost like it should have been here from, from the very beginning. 
family members feel invited back to the cemetery. They feel warm. They feel like there's open arms to come back and, and visit their loved one. We've had friends visit from out of state who have said this is the most beautiful veteran cemetery they've been to. I take a certain amount of pride in that. That's New Hampshire. You know, that's what we do. We take care of our veterans. Some of those people who are buried there, probably like 18, 19 years old, 20, 21, they didn't really have much of a life. You know? I'm 71 years old. You know, thanks to them, we should all be very, very grateful to every one of them people who were buried there. If a young person was asked why it's important to have a New Hampshire State Veterans Cemetery, I would just ask them to come and read the grave markers and take a minute and read the 20 points of history that we have around the circle of flags and meander through the walkway and read some of the monuments and just think about the people in the past that provided your freedom. What I want for when people come to the cemetery, at least for the first time, is to realize that this is not just a place for the dead, but for the living.